Hey, and welcome to this behind the music look at the title track I wrote for Lost Piano, which is a 60 second piece of music I wrote for the trailer. And obviously what I wanted to do was showcase all the sound that are available within 60 seconds, as hard as that is, it's a good challenge. So you'll see in here, there's lots of the piano sounds, there's lots of like the texture synth like sounds, and there's lots of the memory sounds as well, all going on with this in the 60 seconds. Uh, what you'll see as well is what I try to do with the title uh, tracks is always just not use any processing at all. So the sound is purely coming from the instrument themselves. There's a bit of an EQ curve and a limiter on the final master, but apart from that, the, all of the instrument sounds are coming from the actual instrument themselves. So what I'm gonna do is, as I do with all of these, is play the track, show you some of the uh, MIDI data that's happening on screen, and then we'll go in and start breaking down some of those individual sounds so you can hear exactly what's going on. So let's play the track uh, and then we'll take it from there. So as you can see, like quite a lot of different layers to the composition, lots of different elements and stuff going off all at the same time. Nothing particularly sophisticated in the composition, but there's lots to keep your ear engaged with all the different things that I've put in there. The whole composition started off with this wanton sound and what I wanted to do was start off with some sort of like pitch bend effect. So if I play you this soloed so you can hear it. And this is basically wanton on one side of the instrument and then reverence on the other side. But wanton's doing the pitch bend and reverence is staying exactly where it is. So if you look at the tuning on the, on the instrument, you'll see the tuning going down. And that's basically like a minor third all the way down to the octave. And rather than pitch bending from the top up here, like that, I went all the way down to the bottom. I quite like that sound where it's kind of like one sound is staying at pitch and one sound is sort of like coming down to it. I've also got on the process page uh, the wow effect as well so the whole sort of like pitch of that whole sound sounds a bit uneven and a bit unsteady and sort of like it's not like old synths are when you, if you've ever played an old synth before you know they just don't hold their pitch very well and there's always like you know C isn't C it's kind of like it's not even C sharp it's like somewhere in the middle and that's what I was trying to replicate a little bit with this is kind of like the pitch center isn't quite there. So that whole thing's going off for the composition. The other thing that I did with this uh, layer, if I bring open this, is added in this uh, overdrive effect. So this increases as, as you go through the composition. So just increasing the drive of that of that effect as you go through just to make it sound angrier and angrier. The other synth uh, sound effects we've got in here is elemental and reverence. This is pretty cool. So this is elemental and reverence together using, I, I mentioned this in the technical walkthrough, is that you put it on random, you put the depth up to maximum, kind of like an eighth sounds good, sixteenth sounds good as well, uh, just to give this sort of like the random sort of like motion to the whole instrument. I've done this on this one as well. So this is just reverence on its own. So it's a bit more, a bit more erratic, uh, but it still sounds good. 
So those two together. So that's really cool. These reverse felts, oh, let's go to muddle next because that's another synth sound. Absolutely favourite sound. This just goes on forever, like a, like a drone uh, for the whole composition until it gets to the end there. That sound just keeps on changing all the time. It's just like there's stuff happening in there that's always just keeping your ear engaged. I love it. Uh, the reverse felts. Uh, it's, a pia it's one of those piano sounds that I don't think you could play like a piano sound with it, as in like a, a piano piece. It's more just to add effects. It's really cool to play. It's really good because like a lot of the notes are just doing something different. It's kind of like they don't all sound the same at exactly the same time. That's one of those like little hidden gems in the instrument just to add some extra interest. I wouldn't use it for like the main piano sound, but to add some sort of it like interest and sort of like accents here and there. And just to make it sound interesting, it's a really good uh, sound to use. Onto like the actual sort of like more piano-y sounds at the, at the front is one and seven eighths. And I don't think, no, I've, I've not done anything to this apart from add a bit of reverb in the instrument, just because this sound sounds so good on its own, just the, the, the way it undulates because it's been naturally recorded through real tape and then slowed down it's got such an interesting sound on its own. I don't think you really need to do too much to this in terms of processing. Such a cool sound, I love it. I'm gonna use that one loads going forward. Uh, and then uh, this next one, So summer 1973, again that's through a cassette deck, a real cassette deck, so again there's not a lot you need to do to that to make that sound interesting, it's already really interesting on its own. At the end here it, it gets a bit more of a feature. been recorded to tape it's still like quite a deep sound it's still sort of like quite rich in its sound it's not been thinned out too much so onto this little piano section in the middle this little motif that I've included and I do this all the time it's a guilty habit of mine and stolen inspired from people like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross and Nine Inch Nails where they go from this sort of like minor feeling to a major feeling within the same sort of like phrase, within the same sort of passage. I do it loads uh, and I absolutely love the sound of it because your sort of like your mind has got the feeling of that minor chord but then your ears being fed a, a major chord straight after it so it's kind of like clashing and not clashing at the same time. So let's just hear it and you'll see what I mean. So it's kind of like going from this like the, may, the minor chord of D, and then reaching up to the major, and then it's dropping down to the C. And then these two notes just don't belong together. Like you would never say that that particularly sounds nice, but because of everything that's happened just before it, it sounds it sounds good to me. 
So that's what I've done. So, yep, stolen it from people like Nine Inch Nails, but I, I like to use that sort of phrasing quite a lot. To me, it just sounds, it sounds good. And then onto these like little uh, piano notes in the middle, which are just accenting, you know, what's happening on screen. Nothing groundbreaking there at all. Like using those notes isn't, you know, it's not going to win me any any awards. But it, it, if it works, then you know, do it. Uh, the notes are 1973, and I've used a massive reverb, the Discovery One reverb, which is a really cool sound. Go big or go home, I say with that kind of stuff. Uh, and then onto the memories, which kind of like finishes off the piece. Uh, and I've used three different memories engines for this. Let's bring them up. Let's just solo them one by one. So the first one that comes in, they are not in numerical order. Memories two happens first, along with memories three and then memories one, but that's the way it goes, isn't it, on some of these. So this is just the memories engine on its own. I've, I've, I've made the blend of it just happen on the memories. So obviously with the memories engine, the idea is that you can just play notes on their own and then the memories engine kind of like is there to sort of like support what you're playing. But when you want to get really detailed and kind of like split them apart even more, this is why we've added this blend control is so you can just push that blend all the way to the memories only and then just use that on its own if you wanted to split them up. So this is the finger picked sound. At the beginning there's just one note playing but the memories engine is creating all these other notes. I've used like two octaves above and two octaves below to add, you know, those extra notes in. Loads of this dampening and variation so each one of those notes sounds a little bit different to the last. And then memories three, let's just play that on its own. This is on an eighth, again, just with one octave above and no octaves below. So it's a bit more repetitive, a bit more of a, like a driving rhythm. And this is using the felt and ferric sound. And then the one at the top, Memories 1. That's Summer 1973. Quite a lot of uh, this haze control added to that one. So all together, so really nice like just all dancing around each other all creating their own sort of like little space in the music i've panned those as well you'll be able to see that i've panned them sort of like a little bit left and right to again space them out a little bit more as you can see from the, this whole mixer here there's no effects added whatsoever there's a tiny amount of eq on the master just to keep things under control and a little limiter as well just to make sure nothing's you know peaking uh, at the top but apart from that you know everything's all of the sounds are coming from the instrument. There's this final sort of like little one and seven eighths chord as well, which I like. Let's just solo that on its own. Big chord and it's like, it's another one of those chords that I love to do that's neither major nor minor. It's using like a minor second and a seventh. Uh, it stays away from the fifth, stays away from a major or minor third. Uh, and it's it's those sounds that sound really interesting to me where it's, ne it's not happy, it's not sad, it's kind of like somewhere in the middle. So yeah, no major or minor third in there, no fifth to sort of like ground it and root it a little bit more. It's just kind of like a lot, a little bit spread. And I think that's probably why I quite like it is because there's, you know, it doesn't feel happy, it doesn't feel sad, it just feels like somewhere in the middle, you're not sure what it feels like. Uh, so that, that's probably why I, I use them quite a lot. And then just this reverse felt note at the end. Ooh. 
which is really cool. Like I said at the beginning, they're not kind of like a main piano sound that you would write a composition with. It's more like a sound that you would add to a composition to make it sound interesting and just to make it sound a bit cooler. That's what I've been using them for anyway. So that's the whole sort of like piece. I hope from what you can see is and, and what you can hear is that there's so many different sounds that you can get from this. Uh, and that's what's been really fun to write with this is just to kind of like experience all those different sounds all made from this piano so it's been really cool uh, to, to write this piece of music if there's anything you want to know specifically drop us a line in the comments but apart from that i hope you've enjoyed it uh, and we'll see you on the next one take care